Hi everyone, welcome back to the third day of uh, Reason Bootcamp. I hope you're ready for more advanced stuff, because um, today we'll be covering uh, lots of really awesome things, not only in the core language itself, but the uh, actual bridging between uh, other libraries, between uh, globals and stuff like that. Um, but before uh, I go into like this agenda, I removed a couple of things and added a couple of things. Uh, so basically we had polymorphic uh, variants um, in this day. I want to, um, to go through Reason React tomorrow uh, more in depth. So um, I, added, I added it to leftovers and further learning for, for tomorrow. So yeah, and uh, today we'll be covering much more than uh, much more in the buckle script realm than I planned initially. So yeah, bear with me; it will be uh, totally cool. Um, just a second, I need to open the chat so I will see if anybody. Uh, meanwhile, if anybody has uh, some questions from uh, from homework, let me know. We will be doing it right now. <clears throat> cool. So, um, just a second. Um, before going to homework, I was asked yesterday uh, about the um, about basically how we can guards uh, use algebraic data types uh, in uh, in functions uh, function parameters. So, like. Tuples uh, records are algebraic uh, data types, but I think the person uh, who has asked meant guards for basically guarding if uh, our function can receive um, between uh, let's say one and uh, and ten. Uh, so this is the implementation. So for example, uh, I want to create this function, which basically like infix operator um, that does like plus. 22 and 31 but I want to um, I want to limit that to a specific range so what I did here I created a range guard and uh, basically it's a, a pattern match when X uh, is more than, than 10 then uh, then I I'm able to do that if it's less than 10 um, I can raise invalid range exception and uh, it will look something like this. It will work. And if I have, let's say, 8, then I will have invalid range exception. So this is like what's the answer for the question. Let me open just a second the, uh, our homework and we will go through it. Uh, yeah, let me arrange stuff here. <clears throat> so just a second too many screens and windows. Um, yeah, so like regarding homework and, and in general what we are doing. So right now it's in gists after the bootcamp, basically like tomorrow it will be and after I will finish the uh, the bootcamp, it will be in separate repo. Uh, can errors be detected during compilation time? Yeah, sure. They say, uh, you mean like uh, these type of exceptions or uh, type of guards and stuff like that. Uh, most of errors are um, uh, indicated in um, are detected during compilation time and obviously you also have runtime uh, errors you can have runtime errors um, so what i was saying is um that uh, everything will be in the repo so don't worry about the fact like uh it's uh it just guess it will be in the repo because we will be doing bindings for library to uh, for library tomorrow um yeah let me just Open your exercise, uh, and here you go. This is the exercise we had. So I won't be doing the whole exercise because um, 
Yeah, uh, you mean uh, functional uh, function guards? We uh, we cannot do uh, like similar to closure and stuff like that. We cannot do functional guards if that's a question. We can do like other stuff, but uh, and we can like do them uh, do them in that way, but not uh, not like to the function. So at least the uh, what I know of. But um, camel is a um, language that uh, gives you an ability to extend itself, so you can basically create your own PPX, it's called, it's like a syntax extension. So we had this exercise and I already added the exercise for, for today. Uh, so we had these arrays and lists, right? And um, we had to create this uh, uh, sorting thing. Uh, just And yeah, it, uh, it looks like like it's fine, but let me just open out up really quick. Let's paste it here. And eight seven six five three two. Yeah, that's that's the answer basically to the to the question. Then we want to convert previous uh, list to an array and then convert array to list by using array labels fold write function. So um, let's check together what full write means um, and what we can do um, if we search for full write. Uh, basically, it computes uh, a, a1 and uh, returns a list. So what, what we can um, basically do is uh, call list full right and uh, it will get it's um, not sorry not the list array labels array labels fold right and it will get function which will get element and the list itself uh, this function will return element and will return the list and we need to provide some uh, init function with empty list and something is wrong here. Uh, for probably forgot one of the arguments or something. Um, function, uh, it's element and list, and then leads. In it. So if you see an error, uh, let me know. Ah, yeah, and um, I have the third argument that I need to pass. Uh, it's an array. So my array, let me check just a second. Uh, let's see it here, no, that's not the array itself. Yeah, having bad time here. Well, let me just open this snippet because we don't really have time to play around with that. Um, uh where was it i think it was somewhere here um create that full right no not here i had snippet somewhere so i have let's just check it together so i have full drive and i compute function of a and on that and then I spread so I have element and element and I need the third argument ah, I think I found my snippet no it's the wrong snippet probably um, anyways I will paste the solution later on uh, let's continue to the uh, <clears throat> to next thing because uh, we have a lot uh, lots of things to cover um, then I want you to recreate list nth and list nth is basically something like that 
I think I have <laughs> problems with snippets. Uh, or maybe, you know what? No, still. Ah, okay. And I have L. If you see an arrow, let me know because, like, I ah, that's the reformat it did weird things for me. Okay, now it's good. It was the reformat that uh, uh, thought it's like a separate line, so it's all already like created this and uh, function and, and closed it. Uh, so yeah, so I have. Uh, yeah, it's an used variable. I actually don't really need to do that. So what I do, how do I uh, get nth uh, um, element is basically when my index is, uh, yeah, when my index is less than zero, I uh, get like sum of uh, head. And if I have a tail that I get, like I call it itself and I uh, go down. So basically that's the end. Um, yeah, the next one, write a function that uh, determines if something is isogram. Uh, so sorry for just like going quick through this uh, we have a lot of things to cover in, in terms of like theory for for today so i want to uh, be quick on on these exercises and um yeah i will paste all solutions as usual so you will uh, be able to uh, go through these solutions and uh, uh, like play around with it so isogram is um, again it's a um it's a sentence with um uh, when letters are not uh, basi basically la letters are unique, right? So what I get, I get in uh, input string. I uh, change it to lowercase. Remember the JS uh, module we talked about? So this JS model, uh, it has string on it. And basically it gives me uh, every string manipulation I have in JavaScript. So I can use it here. So basically take my uh, um, take my uh, string and I split it, uh, then I get an array, then I can convert it to list, I can sort it to be unique, and then I can uh, basically check the list length with lowercase string. So this lowercase string basically takes the string and converts it to lowercase, right? So I am checking the length with the length, meaning like if I sort uniquely my um, array of uh, of characters, and uh, um, I have uh, characters that are uh, not unique, my um, array length will be less than list length. That's why um, that that's how it's created. Um, then um, right, um, we had write a recursive function to convert from normal numbers to Roman uh, numerals. So this is done in the following way. So th there is like a Wikipedia article and whatnot about the, how you convert from Roman uh, numer from regular um, digits to roman numerals and basically let me show you the solution it's one of the possible solutions there are like a bunch of them um uh, there is no like a perfect way to do that so basically how it's done i have uh <coughs> let me just open it here so I have uh, something like that. So I have once, which is a pattern match on characters, and it will return um, Roman numerals, right? Then I have tens, and I will have again Roman numerals for all uh, my tens. 
then hundreds and then thousands. So with the Roman numerals, if you go beyond 3,000, uh, like 3,099, uh, you still can continue with like tagged letters, but it's like it's different letters. So I, I just like omitted it here. You can extend this functionality further. And uh, yeah, so in order to, uh, so I have these like helper functions, right? So what I need to do is to take this, uh, uh, this number and um, I convert this number to a string. Then I get the string length of it. And if it's one, then I call ones. If it's two, uh, I call tens. And that, that's actually, it's uh, getting a character from specific position on the string. This is kind of syntax sugar. So uh, when you have three, you have hundreds, tens, and ones, uh, thousands, uh, hundreds, tens, and ones. And if not, it's raised uh, out of range exception. And speaking of exceptions, we haven't talked much about them, but like definition of exceptions is uh, super easy. You just try exception out of range, pass uh, any type that you want and um, that you, you want to pass and uh, that's it you in order to raise it you just call raise and it's like a throw exception um, yeah so that's how it's done and uh, we call <coughs> yeah and if it's something like that, then it will be something. As you can see, it's, it's different. It has one for, for C and stuff like that. So there are a bunch of, um, like if if we go uh, further into homework, like uh, having a merge salt and uh, binary search tree and priority queue, we uh, probably will be doing uh, half of our um, stream today on just solving our homework and I want to cover more uh, things. So in, in terms of merge salt and in general algor uh, algorithm uh, in reasonable matter, there is really cool repo that I need to show you. And you actually can see the the, the solution for this, uh, for merge salt algorithm there, and it's a pretty good one. So um, if you go, you will have the link. If you go to this repo, have lots of different algorithms uh, and it's basically it's based on uh, MIT course of um, introduction to algorithms and um, yeah so it's like basic algorithms like insertion salt, mail salt, heaps, stuff like that. Um, if we just like walk fast through that so uh, basically the idea um, of merge salt, uh, salt is like splitting and then salting like each array and stuff like that. So um, we have merge, we have salt function, and here we have a bunch of um, recursive auxiliary functions and uh, do salting inside. So feel free just to go through this repo and, and uh, check what's, uh, uh, it's one of the, the answers. And um, there are a bunch of really cool, um, content here, you have lectures on, on actual algorithms and how they implement it and reason. So you can like extend this bootcamp further to go in through this repo and just having more knowledge on algorithms and, uh, algorithms and stuff like that. Have like a uh, breadth for search, depth for search, uh, also implement here, which is a uh, really nice implementation because they use hash table from OCaml standard library and yeah there are lots of uh, cool tricks here so check this out um, well sorry. um yeah binary search tree module create uh, that structure as well the insert and remove functions so uh, we already created binary tree so it's just like extending this bi uh, binary tree a little bit further uh, so in a nutshell, let me pa uh, paste the code and, and just show you really quick. And uh, I won't dive into priority queue and we will just continue to modules because we stopped there yesterday and um, we have much more to cover today. So the... Uh, yeah, something with the... Uh, <sighs> 
Yeah, I don't know why it's error here, but ah, yeah, sorry, I'm pasting from the. It didn't copy everything. <laughs> Just copied parts of code. Uh... Yeah, it's still. Still has a problem that that's well. Uh, now that's well, that's not copy uh, things. Anyways, I will. Uh, so like, let's just copy it in chunks. So uh, in chunks. So I have binary search tree, right? We've seen this already, and then I can define like. Um, an empty and uh, binary search tree. Uh, I it's probably it's not closed or something. Uh, I have empty node and that. Just checking if it's, yeah. Um, maybe I forgot parentheses or something. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, it was weird. Sometimes with this um, um, VS Code plugin, sometimes if you have weird behavior, you uh, do a command shift P and you have restart reason language server, you restart it and um, like the problem goes away. So just be aware of that. So sometimes it won't be logical errors. Um, but yeah, it will um, eventually will be improved. Um, yes, yeah, so where was I? Uh, Okay, I won't fix syntax. Just like going uh, really fast through the uh, through the answer. So I have a tree and a compare function, and I uh, pattern match on my tree. If it's empty, uh, then I go like to node with value left empty, uh, and I have a bunch of pattern matches here for for insert. The the idea that I, um, with binary search tree for insert, I compare left and, and right branch and I insert only, uh, if I remember correctly, to the left one, because th then when you traverse through this uh, binary search tree, you need to traverse only uh, right on, uh, or right, uh, left uh, branch. Uh, so that's the idea. You have basically the same thing we did with creating a tree, but you have this uh, comparison in, uh, done inside, and that's it. That's the whole of the whole thing. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, cool. Now let's go actually into uh, st studying things, and I will recap on on modules because uh, it was like close to the end of the stream and um, we have much more content on modules today and uh, there were several things that didn't work in the editor so uh, I owe you um, yeah so like again to recap on modules let's just open our let's just remove our homework from here <clears throat> Um, yeah, and I will uh, uh, recap on these ones. Uh, so what we've talked about with modules um, is like every file is a module, right? So you can put every file in, doesn't matter in which directory it is, it's a module and you can consume it by uh, several, uh, with several options. So you can, uh, and let's say it's just empty so I can uh, say my demo was something there I think I had my rocket this um, let's say reverse num okay so I have demo reverse num and I can simply use it and um, 
based uh, you know, 72 yeah, and it's supposed to reverse uh, that's well uh, Ah, yeah, because I have already JS log inside this demo. Let's just remove it for. <laughs> yeah, because um, the reason I, I have this JS log uh, twice, it's the same as if um, like in JavaScript, you import a module and you have console log in the module, not inside uh, any closure or anything, just like inside the module, it will be executed, right? So the same idea because it's eventually it compiles to JS, right? So um, 27, and that's fine. Another uh, thing that I can do, uh, and we've seen it, uh, yes, and I will see it right now, we can um, create these submodules. Uh, and then we can just use them either here we can just say uh, ma uh, math times uh, uh, what was that two and three and uh, just log two and three and have six if I just remove it from here and I go to my demo uh, and paste it here it won't work because it doesn't know where is where the math is so i need to prefix it with modules math times because every name of the file will be um, um, as the name of the module and uh, yeah then then you just do it like that um, another option is you can open your um, your module and then everything is inside the module is available on the uh, scope of the of this module. So this is one thing. Another thing that I can do if it's only for one, uh, I can open it locally. I can say um, I want to run this math times uh, only for let's say one expression. So I can just use it like that, and it will work in the same way. Sometimes it's useful. Um, you will see, we will talk a little bit tomorrow about BS React Native. So styling there, you will see locally open modules and everything will uh, be, will be will have much more sense when we will see Reason, React and, and BS React Native. Because you will already know how modules work. Uh, it will be much, much simpler than just jumping into Reason React. Uh, so this is the another option what we've uh, what we've seen beyond that is that we can define interfaces right so we can define tools interface and say uh, math is uh, of math tools interface and if I remove these times for example that's fine but if I remove times from here it will uh, it's supposed to yell at me because um, the signature and like interfaces is uh, essentially a signature of the module so uh, it will yell at me that the signature doesn't match so this is one thing another thing that we can do uh, is having interface files so for the uh, sub modules we create interface in that way but what uh, what if we want to create um, Actually, let's create a new file and let's call it uh, log. And on our log, let's create uh, an actual implementation of log. log. So we'll have a uh, make function and probably just something like that. Uh, and we have, let me just paste a bit of code here. So we have a make function. We have, let me just remove those. And uh, what are we doing we just logging string printing uh we have a print function which gets uh, some kind of log and prints the log and we have log string we can log string and uh like have uh, go into the next line and just to make function um so nothing nothing really important nothing really useful right 
So what we can do, we create can create an interface for our files. So we uh, we don't have a sub module here, but we still want to um, somehow um, li limit our uh, module consumers. We don't want them to use make function, and we don't want them to use log uh, str function. For example, we want some kind of private function, auxiliary function, stuff like that. Because we uh, we don't really want everything to be imported, right? So what we can do, I can go to the sprint and I have this really uh, cool uh, thing in editor. I can click on it and click on add to interface file. What will happen, log REI will be created. And for some reason it didn't work yesterday, no way. Uh, log REI is created and here you see the signature of the file print get string and that's it so now if i go to my modules here and i go and try to use make function what was that by the way it was uh, getting a unit so my make function won't work at all because it's not exported in interface um, and my print function will work perfectly. Yeah. So print string. I don't know why it's adding this kind of character in the end. <coughs> Log string. Never mind. Uh, so uh, I want to, let's say, use a make function which does nothing. Um, and in order to, um, ah, it's it's uh, prefixed with that because it's uh, I'm not doing JS log uh, suffix for that because I'm not uh, doing JS log. I'm doing print string, and in our top it worked perfectly here. Um, if you want to console log in JS, you just use JS log. So if we will change that to JS log, and uh, here change it back and run it, it, it will get the proper value. So now I want to have this make function that does nothing, and it's not exported. So um, I can go to my log re go here inside and add it to interface file. And now it's added to interface file, but one important thing um, I consider it as a tip, it adds to interface file, it doesn't save it. So you need to save it and then it works. So this is the, the cool thing about the um, about having these interface files. In addition to that, uh, I won't cover this during this bootcamp, but um, you have a tool, it's called Odoc, and this tool um, gives you an ability to add, um, it comes from a camel world, and it gives you an ability to add comments with specific format to your REI files, and uh, you run a command and it, and it generates documentation for you, for these REI files. So we will see tomorrow in BS React Native how how I did that with the documentation and stuff. Um, yeah, so uh, that's how our um, RAI files work. Um, in addition to that, I may say something. Um, I want to use abstract types. So just to recap, if I do something like that, it's an abstract type because it's not referred to any type at all, right? So what I can do, I can say that uh, my log REI will get type T and um, basically like uh, I have make function gets unit uh, and I will return type T and with print I will return I will get type T. 
Uh, it doesn't make any difference now, but for example, if you create this in REI file tomorrow, you want to change this log implementation to be like integer or whatever, then uh, your REI file stays the same because it uses abstract type. And uh, the actual type is inferred from the actual implementation of this module. Um, yeah, so that's for the interfaces. Uh, we talked about using modules, so like qualified names, you can open them. There is a neat module that you uh, should look at it. Uh, it's called Belt. It comes with JavaScript, uh, with the uh, buckle script, sorry. And um, it has a bunch of data structures um, that you can use, uh, all kind of hash maps and, and um, yeah, we will talk a little bit about belt option maybe in the end of the stream if we'll have time uh, but yeah definitely check this out and um, we can just say open JS and then I want instead of using JS log I want just to log something and it will work in, in the same way so yeah that, that's the idea. Yeah. In addition to that, I can include modules. So let's do something like that. Let's uh, log with something. So I have my log um, and I will create a sub module inside and uh, I will call it um, um, log with uh, I don't know, not good at names. So log with full, and I want to include log, meaning I will have um, all functionality that I have from log already inside. It's like extending a module, right? And then I can say a equals uh, what was that print. Uh, what it got? Uh, print type string expression boss of type T. Yeah, that's well. <clears throat> Let's just for the sake of uh, example, just remove abstract type here. Uh, important thing there is much more in reason ML um, realm and obviously like uh, I will I'm trying to cover like everything that is really important but there are lots of things that that um, you still need to uh, like try out and play with it because um, I I, tr I try to cover the basics so you can uh, actually start creating um, uh, actual products with the, the reason ML, use them in production and stuff like that. But uh, obviously there are some uh, things that um, I simply don't have enough time to, to cover in these four days. Four days. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is like the including log, right? So it's opening a log and I can print things. Um, same you can do with, uh, with interfaces. So um, here, for example, if I have uh, another interface uh, type, it's called my interface. Uh, Uh, yeah, sorry. And just uh, it has to be um, something like that, and then it's uh, it's not light binding. It's uh, types, so it will have int and uh, will return unit, something like that. Now I can say include interface, and now it will yell at me because I don't I haven't implemented my t. 
with getting integer function and will be a and something like that so it has to be unit in the end yeah uh, yeah something like that so I can include interfaces and um, yeah so um, play around with it you will have um, you actually had this um, uh, I think you I'm not sure if you had this exercise or it's the one I um, I added for for today let me just check really quick if not I will I will add it so the idea is to have this binary tree that you created or essentially like uh, anything uh, not only the the binary tree and um, wrap it in the module use interfaces and stuff like that uh, just a second Yeah, you were supposed to create binary search tree module for creating data structures as well as with the insert and remove functions. So uh, try to extend it further and uh, just create it more, uh, uh, like create this interface for that and, and, and stuff like that. Okay, cool. So we've gone through modules. Um, then, Just a second. And just a second, I need to check something. Yeah. Um, Okay, uh, cool. We've gone through the. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. Sort of for delay some technical things. Yeah, so we talked about interfaces, talked about that. Um, cool. Another thing that um, yeah. Um, yeah, I um I just need to get uh, water really quick is um like super dry from talking so um uh, um just uh, wait a couple a couple of minutes I will be back okay. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry about that. Yeah, was just getting a little bit dizzy because of like lack of water. So yeah, sorry about that. I'm back on track. Need to drink more water. Yeah, so um, uh, let's talk about aliasing of our modules. Um, and um, what I can do basically, I can uh, say that I have module L, and my module L is basically um, a demo, for example. 
So later on, my demo had uh, uh, my demo had this uh, reverse num, right? So what I can do, I have uh, I can call it now l reverse num, and then. Um, I'm good to go. So I can alias modules in the same way I can alias types and, and do like um, really cool stuff. Um, another thing, I think I was asked yesterday, if I remember correctly, that there is, um, if there's any option to namespace uh, modules with uh, like putting them in folders and stuff like that. So let's do something, something similar. Let's create a module called namespace. Uh, S and it uh, log re something like that. So I have the this one and let me create a function. Um, that just does does just log. Cool. So right now, if I go into uh, so it's called namespace na namespace s log re. So if I go inside my modules, I can now say open namespace s. Not actually supposed to work. <laughs> uh, yeah, not sure why it's not working. Uh, names maybe I uh, actually I'm not using it much but uh, uh, maybe it just changed <laughs> funny and then I can uh, no Uh, no, apparently I have to check and uh, get back to you on that. Uh, yeah, cool. So, um, let's talk now about uh, standard library. And then we will get into uh, some cool stuff with functors and... Uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, in terms of time, it's like 3.51 right now, AM. <laughs> so yeah, uh, sorry about the the break. I had to take water. It's like, I'm not sleeping or anything, but like I, I have to drink more water, I guess. Um, yeah, so let's uh, open, um, let's try um, and see standard library. We've seen, I, I think already like uh, several times and all our lists and arrays and everything from standard library so uh, you have array here and you have list and everything is familiar right so um, uh, camel comes with standard library you can use anything from here and it's also module so uh, it means that you can open them in the same way that you use local modules and stuff like that. Yeah, let me uh, write down that I owe you a namespace thing. Uh, cool. Um, so this is a standard library. This is one thing. Another thing that we'll be looking really in depth today. Um, well, not in depth, but more like uh, high level, but um, um, like we'll, we'll try to cover as much as we can. Of page not found. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, this is buckle script that we talked about, and we will try to cover uh, almost everything from from buckle script and 
we'll play around with that. So bef uh, this is also uh, something like if we convert uh, Reason to JavaScript, that's what we use. And uh, it comes with several libraries with it. It comes with Belt, DOM, Node, JS. Uh, um, basically, JS you already seen. Node is for um, uh, node manipulation and stuff, uh, for like uh, server and stuff like that. DOM for uh, uh, for HTML. And Belt is for like different data structures and stuff like that so this is additional thing and um yeah um now let's talk a little bit about functors so what uh there are much more to uh, explain about functors i will just try to be uh, brief because we have a lot of things in in buckle script realm so functor is basically a function whose parameters are modules and the result is a module so in terms of like how it looks like let's create something um, let's say I have a module count and um, no it's a bad example actually it's already after I created it's the wrong <laughs> snippet it's after I created the, the actual count, count um, functor. Um, let's let's create uh, some count type. So we have module type with count, and we have some count here, which is uh, which is fine. It's like the same we've seen in interface. It's basically like creating interface, right? So nothing nothing different from what we we are used to. So now what we can do we can create um, uh, some kind of um, wait a second just we'll create a ma make function and our make function is uh, not a function actually it's a module that uh, so it looks like a function instead of let that we had with a function and uh, argument and type we had the same but with the modules so that's the idea we have make and we have a count provided inside and like repeat function inside so that's fine we we created those so we created this signature we created this uh, module and um, and now uh, what we can do we can go to another module uh, And let's say I actually have it here. Yeah, basically the same. So I have uh, uh, the count. I have an, I added another type. I want to uh, have a return type. So I have uh, I have repeat, which is recursive function here. And I just want things to be typed, right? So I created this interface and I created this one. So when I created this interface, it means that whenever I use this make function, I have to provide it with parameter, which uh, uh, has the same signature as count, which is super cool for um, various implementations. So right now, if I go to day three, and if I want to create a, a repeat a module, um, my repeat module will call make function on another module on this one and it has to provide some kind of uh, like okay, you can see uh, think about that as, as configuration right so instead of just putting here some kind of configuration or argument or whatever I put here uh, another module which has, which has specific signature and which has to confine to its interface let's say what why it's useful because for example i have some module that does um, um computation or something right and this module uh, gives um, ex uh, an ability to c uh, module consumers to uh, create their own uh, comparator functions their own uh, like different computation functions that this module will uh, will use internally so that's that's the main idea so think about that as say uh, same as passing a function but like function is just like one thing 
here you can define methods inside and, and whatnot. So that's, that's the main idea. I know it's like briefly, but um, um, you, you need to like play around with that and you will have uh, uh, you will have a homework creating a functor and uh, tomorrow we will also recap on that and we'll go through that. The reason why, I w uh, and I want to show you tomorrow B BS React Native uh, and uh, BS React Native example, uh, there are functors there and it will be beneficial to show it to you after we uh, we will go through uh, Reason React and you will understand how it works and yeah, um, that's the idea. So now we will get into uh, buckle script domain so um we will write in buckle script domain but right now we will uh, actually we won't use node anymore here we will use we have i have here webpack configuration which is just basic um let's uh let's create new file here new module let's call it uh how should i call it uh, day three web day three web and uh, now it created this file and what I can do with my webpack config is pass it to uh, it's not a demo it's day three uh, web right so what we will do now, we will go into this file and just put here JSLog. <clears throat> Let's start dev. Uh, let me open the my browser. It compiled. <clears throat> Here's my console, I have hello web. <coughs> For simplicity, I will put everything in, in the console. So yeah, I can, I have here um, HTML file uh, with main CSS that I don't need. So I'll just remove that. And uh, yeah, I have hello web, right? So, um, now we will talk a lot about interop between um, and in, in general we will start to uh, talk about how buckle script works and then we'll talk about interop and how we um, bridge between like having packages modules global values and stuff like that and bridging them to reason and bridging from from reason to um, to JavaScript world and it's called f5 uh, foreign function uh, interface or JavaScript interop and it's uh, it's there in a bunch of docs but I want to kind of summarize everything in a more uh, approachable way I guess uh, in general speaking of docs when you work in uh, reason web and mobile realm you need to uh, be aware of two um, uh, basically documentations, uh, the reason documentation and buckle script uh, documentation. So here I have my main JS, which you've seen with Webpack was basically uh, just including this buckle script file. And I have here my uh, BSB running. I remember when we created this uh, project, we did like BSB uh, in it uh, with a uh, basic reason theme. So then when I run start, I have this command running and uh, this command uses its buckle script and it uses bsconfig.json file to like configure things 
and um, to output like things properly. So tomorrow we'll also talk about build system and uh, and how it uh, works, what uh, what things you can add and, and stuff like that. So let's get into our uh, our file. Or was it? Yeah, hello web. Cool. So let's start with. Um, um, well, actually, let's start with uh, data structures. I think, local script data types. So um, we have this like world is world, right? And we want to interpolate. Um, um, like our string concatenation uh, now uh, looks usually as like something like that. And we want uh, to have something from JavaScript realm, having like um, templates, uh, strings and stuff like that. So with buckle script, we can actually do something like that. It won't work in our top, obviously. It works only in buckle script. <coughs> but if we rerun it, We will have hello world here. Yeah, uh, we won't because we don't have JS log. Yeah, okay, cool. So we have this hello world. Um, and um, now let's talk about floats. So floats, um, there are several um, things that we can do in JavaScript world uh, on, on floats and Buckle Script provides us with js.float. Uh, and we, we can say uh, something that we can say, um, let's say exponent. Uh, and my exponent will get uh, will be JS float. It will use the exponential and something like that. We don't have this in reason. We have this in JavaScript. We can now do JS log on exponent and rerun. And we will get the result. That's not the best, uh, uh, best performance right now in dev for some reason. Maybe because I have like several other things running too. Yeah, but we have uh, exponent uh, here too. And yeah, the, the performance is only like the bottleneck is Webpack because uh, compilation of. Uh, let me just show you how much time it takes to recompile. Uh, that's it. That's the whole buckle script compilation. The rest is is webpack. So don't blame buckle script for, for for loading times. Um, yeah. Uh, so we have floats. Um, we have arrays. So we can use JS array for um, like common things that we have in JavaScript, like uh, uh, like reduce and, and stuff like that, we can use them with JS array. We can just pass array here and, and, and just use it. Uh, everything is documented in JS module. So uh, I will just like cover in this briefly and then we'll uh, talk about interop. Uh, tuples, we are compiled to JS arrays. We've already seen that. Booleans, um, Booleans, uh, since buckle, uh, now it's buckle script four. Since buckle script three, they already compiled to um, uh, to JavaScript booleans. Previously, you had to specifically call it JS boolean. It was like uh, was overhead. Right now, it's not the case. It just like booleans compile compiles to booleans. Uh, uh, records variants objects are not shared at all. We have conversions that we need to do. And we will talk about them a little bit later when we'll talk about um, 
uh, all kind of like converters that we can create uh, how we like bridge from let's say you create uh, an app in reason you have a record you want to pass it over to npm package how you do that we'll cover the, uh, that uh, shortly um, installing libraries um, because you can consume any javascript package and essentially if you look at the API of the F, um, at the compiled file you, you will see well, not here, but you will see requires, so you can basically require any external module, right, and use it. So uh, to install uh, libraries, you just um, npm install, and then in addition to that, you have bs config JSON. Inside, you have bs dependencies. You put things in bs dependencies, and then it's available for buckle script. Um, for your homework, you need to write tests with bsjs and um, uh, in order to uh, like uh, to do that you need to install bsjs then add it to bs dependencies and then when you go to uh, here i can say open jest and then i will have uh, describe well i don't have just here so but i will have describe function and uh, you, you you probably will see in the repo itself well not probably obviously you will see in a, a repo itself there will be explanation how to use it so that's uh, one of the exercises to write a couple of tests for, for several things uh, so that's for uh, libraries install installation and data types and now it's important to understand how we can bridge the gap between JavaScript and reason so let's start let me show you something before that. I created this external file. I have at least index.html that I showed you, and I have external JS. My external JS has uh, things that are not in reason. They are just in JavaScript. They are available on global scope. And uh, they are here uh, in order to show you how I can bridge things between one uh, uh, between JavaScript and, and reason. Uh, do I need to add every npm package? Um, yeah, thanks, Rob. Yeah, that's the question. Um, yeah, that's the answer, basically. Ones that you need to bridge, you need to add to. Uh, like the ones that you want to have available for a buckle script, then you obviously need to add them to BS uh, config. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so this is the external. And now let's go to day three and um, uh, do some things so we have an ex escape hatch and it's um, kind of the first thing that you can do if you run um, um, reason you create a reason project you have a library you still don't know how to type everything but you still want to use JavaScript code and um, what, what do you do? You basically, like everything in um, um, FFI and interop will be in the following syntax. It goes in the uh, uh, brackets and you have BS with different types of uh, like inclusion. So in this case, you will have BS row. <laughs> and inside you will have, remember this is multi-line strings. We talked about multi-line strings, right? So here you will say have, for example, console log hello. So now if I rerun that, up, oh, sorry. I think it's it's changed to that. I'm not using much uh, raw, so you have to forgive me on that. Ah, yeah, I think because I need to wrap it with uh, some function. <coughs> And I will call it, uh, let's say it will be C 
something like that. It will compile and now if I call I can call it just like that. Supposed to call other function. <clears throat> ah, it's trying to call itself. Uh, anyway, let me just copy it from from what I had uh, here. Let's just change it from other to something else. And then call one uh, and two. Uh, <coughs> JS log. So what's happening here? All right, thanks. Yeah, window alert, right. Because it's on a global and doesn't know the global. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so here, let's rerun it. I have three. So what's happening here? I can remove that, and it will tell me that uh, like it's not used and stuff like that. But the idea is I have raw here, raw JavaScript. And I want to type it. So the idea is, I have my own function, and I want, uh, and I pass like function signature, get, get into ints, and I return an int, and uh, I get some raw JavaScript inside. So this is like one, one type of uh, uh, of doing uh, like raw things. Uh, another type is uh, so, and you notice you have thing uh, this thing here. Right. Another thing that you can do, you can say, even without the brackets, uh, you can say raw var a equal one, and then let me just paste it from my example here. Uh, had a somewhere. I have too much a's anyway. Uh, and can call it like that, and a is supposed to be available actually. Ah, no, it's on the, on the module scope. Yeah, sorry. So the th thing is, this raw is just like for one statement, and for uh, creating like a, um, like top level variables and stuff like that. This is like, a, like I prefer not to use raw at all, but um, sometimes you need to do that if you um, like do some like hacky things and uh, like uh, you need to get at some point you know, have these escape hatches. And um, um, let me show you where you can read more about that um, on embedding raw uh, JavaScript. So in um, buckle script docs, you will have uh, you have a bunch of things a bunch of docs and you have embed raw, raw JavaScript. So and you see the same as I showed you, you have these like multi line strings and stuff like that. And um, yeah, you can put things inside. So for example, if you want you have variants, right? And variants are not bridged to JavaScript, but you still want to, let's say, um, get their values or something like that. You can't get their named values, but what you can do, you can get their, um, uh, be because they are kind of compiled to array and uh, with uh, numbers, then you can get the numeric values of this variant. So let's say if you have a variant with name test and the variant with the name test2, you will get it on the JavaScript side. Um, if you pass it to the raw function like this, you, uh, you pass a variant, you can use these numbers to transfer uh, to get the, the actual like value like zero or one and then based on these values do uh, various stuff. So it's like escape hatch, but um, it's important to have um, um, 
several escape hatches for uh, being able to do uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, let's go to the next one. And now is the most important one. There is the you know, thing, it's called external. And it's uh, it's the main thing that we'll be using. And uh, in a nutshell, you can treat external as a lead binding, but uh, for um, external uh, things. So um, um, yeah, so uh, it looks like if you want to create, uh, let's say, let me open uh, one example here of timeout, for example. Let's go through this timeout. Uh, timeout example. So I have some kind of. Actually, let me just make it uh, without uh, proper tricks. Uh, I have timeout, and uh, it can be. Yeah, let's just leave it as timeout. So anyway, I have some kind of type here, right? And I have set timeout. Uh, so what's happening here with bsval? bsval is basically calling um, external, uh, create a binding called set timeout that has this signature. And uh, to get this, uh, the, the actual value of this, um, uh, of this function, I need to uh, call a string uh, call, um, print it here. So let me uh, let me explain. So um, like lead binding, how do you create? You say let a, a equal some uh, something something, right? A plus b, for example. Uh, and you have a and b. So uh, this that's fine. And um, types are inferred, right? But when you bridge to um, from JavaScript to reason, you you need to specify these types because you, you don't have them, right? Uh, so if I would have created this binding without any, um, without type inference, what I would have done, I would say this is int, this is int, and uh, this will return an int, right? So that what uh, I would have said. Um, the same you see here for timeout. So this is a signature, right? And this is abstract type. So this is a signature. Set timeout will be a function that gets a unit, that gets a function, because this, this is like a function signature, and gets an integer. And yeah, that's the signature of a timeout, because uh, you do like set set timeout, you pass a function, and you do something like that, right? So you have this function and you have an integer. The same here. So you say, okay, this is this will be my um, my signature of, um, of parameters that function is supposed to get. And it will return some kind of parameter. So remember that set timeout, uh, in order to clear timeout, I need to to set it on some variable and then I, I need to call it uh, pass it to clear timeout. So in order to do that and to to know that I'm passing correct value, I just create this abstract type. And now if I need to call uh, clear timeout, I will call it in the following way. I will call clear, clear timeout and I will say uh, I'm getting timeout and then I will say equal clear timeout so what's happening here why why I have the string here this string tells buckle script to search for the um, for, for the value on a global scope called clear timeout that's what it basically say and I have a short uh, and you can notice that it's the same name. So in buckle script, you have a shorthand for that, you can just omit clear timeout, and then it will infer this name and um, it will be basically the same. So that's how you uh, basically bridge global values and use abstract types. So now I want to do additional thing. 
I want to, uh, so let me just, uh, I will just leave them here. <coughs> Let's talk about, um, about scopes. So I want to use math random. Okay, so um, what I should do, I have uh, random basically exist on a, a math scope in my global scope, right? So I can write be, uh, be a scope math, and then I pass external. I will always pass external. And then I say random. Um, random that is getting an integer and it will return uh, sorry uh, yeah it's getting an integer it returns a float and it will be something like that I'm still missing something <clears throat> Math. I have a window example. Let me show you the window example. Uh, basically, it's it's the same. Ah, yeah, I, I forgot the BS file. Sorry. So I create BS scope, and I need to create BS file. So basically, what I what I'm saying is, um, have this random. Search for this random called random on the on if I would have done uh, wouldn't have done uh, this one I would have said search random in my global scope and I don't have uh, that one but if I say be a scope math I uh, I basically tell search for global scope math for uh, like module on global scope math and search for random on this module that's what uh, I will be saying and right now uh, if I call just log random 23 i will uh, i supposed to get um, a random value it takes time to compile uh, on the web uh, 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 recap the only utility of buckle scripts to interface for JavaScript and runtime. Um, well, um, yeah, yeah, because um, the, the thing is, like, uh, when you type these things, uh, you at compilation time, you still can have type errors if you type things incorrectly, stuff like that. So, you, it's kind of a mixture of, of both. But the actual bridging happens in runtime because it's in JavaScript world. You cannot pass it through compiler. Uh, so yeah, you see, you have here, uh, uh, you have here a random number, right? So this is uh, another thing. Um, for example, if I want to. Um, if I have um, like window location and stuff like that, and I have like nested uh, basically path that I need to go into in the scope, I can do uh, here with uh, with the tuple. I can instead of path as in math, I can pass let's say window. I don't remember. It's like window location. Uh, let's say ancestor origins, right? So I want to create a new one actually. Uh, I will do, I will create my scope and my scope will have window, it will have a location and will have ancestral origins. Uh, that's one thing. Other thing I will have, uh, uh, and I have length on it, right? So I have BS val which is external and called length and my length will be basically integer and it will equal um, to length I can actually say just to show you I can rename things and sometimes you have to do that because remember you have to call bindings in a camel case and sometimes on the JavaScript world you can have 
method uh, methods in um, uppercase and you simply cannot bridge them properly uh, without uh, uh, yeah regard the buckle cell uh, buckle script itself uh, the in um, can transpile also from a camel right the the question was more on of um, um, or oh, maybe I didn't get the question. Um, ah, okay. Sorry, I didn't get the question previously. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Rob. That's uh, that's a good answer. Buckle script basically also uh, can bridge your camel, and actually, if you go from a camel to JavaScript. Um, so if you go to buckle script, you have a camel docs, so you can do the same as I do it in uh, in reason. I can do it in camel; it will bridge uh, bridge it to JavaScript. Uh, and yeah, sometimes uh, speaking of that, if you want to write node extensions, you cannot write them in reason. You can write them in, uh, as far as I know, you can write them in a camel. And use buckle script to bridge them to um, to JavaScript. Um, yeah. So now I want to use length uh, to get this length. Let's get that. Yeah, so le length of uh, my ancestor, of ancestors origins of uh, like window location ancestor origins will be zero. And you see, I can use uh, it as a tuple here and basically get uh, into uh, into the hierarchy. So this is the additional thing. Um, another thing that uh, example that I wanted to show you somewhere here. Here. No, it's like already converters. Um, yeah, not that one. Uh, there is something else that I want to show. Just a second. Um, yeah, let's talk about nullable in JavaScript, like undefined and options and stuff like that. So. Um, Basically, you can say something like that. Sorry for not typing all of these. I have these in snippets. The reason for that is because like, I have too much to cover today and uh, uh, we have way to go, uh, like lots of things to cover in, in buckle script realm and it would just like faster. So I have some kind of, uh, and uh, by the way, that's how you use modules. Um, so I use a module and on my module I have my ID um, and um, basically it's a nullable string right so uh, sometimes I will use just nullable T with passing um, a type to get uh, basically a string that can be a string or can be null and uh, also I get some um, Cool utility functions as uh, like JS nullable from option and uh, and to option. Basically, I convert from uh, can convert from null to option and then use like uh, pattern matching and stuff like that. So uh, it's written in docs. Um, now let's talk about um, JavaScript objects. And before we go about JavaScript objects, um, the ones of you that um, looked at the docs previously or looked uh, during the course you might uh, might have noticed that there is um, I talked only about records but there is also a part in the docs that's talking about uh, it's talking about objects and the reason I didn't cover that is because I um, didn't want the mis misunderstanding later because uh, like in reason you have objects but these objects are not the the ones we use them for JavaScript that's like totally different thing uh, and I think it's even written somewhere here uh, what's important to understand is the syntax so to create an object you will uh, create it like to create a type uh, it's the similar as you create a record but you put this dot here 
uh, and to access fields you will use with uh, with hash uh, or double hash that's that's how uh, uh, like you use hash for the regular objects with JavaScript logic we, we will uh, look at it in a bit we uh, use double hash hashes and it's different objects that's the reason I haven't covered that um, and let's get back to our page here uh, so, uh, how do I use a JavaScript object? And when I'm talking about JavaScript object, I am talking about this one. So, um, uh, sorry, uh, this one, dictionaries, for example, I can have, um, can create hash maps, let's say. I want create JS map will be uh, an empty dictionary. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, that's well. Uh, if uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's. I think it's. I have it somewhere here on snippets. <clears throat> uh, where was it? Day three. Adult, yeah. Um, that's still driving. Let's just open the API and just look really quick. Uh, we uh, and that's how we check our uh, functions in API. So we have this just dict. Now what's wrong? Yeah. So this is the module, and. Um, as empty, it's supposed to get a unit. Yeah, it looks I used it correctly, right? <clears throat> Contest uh, JS dict and I get an empty in just a second. Super world. <clears throat> okay, let's let's see what's wrong here. Uh, okay, the tile contains that can be generalized. Uh, uh, it might be because I need to pass it as a T. If I pass it as general type, no, still. Hmm, that's weird. If I just ah, okay, <laughs> got it. So the the thing is, uh, it just shows me an error because I haven't put anything in my map, so my map cannot be empty, and um, yeah. So um, this is how I create uh, maps in um, with JSDIC, and if I log that, you will see what I will get. Let me just reload it. Yeah, so I have this, I, I get proper uh, like dictionary and stuff like that. So you will probably use this a lot and 
um, especially when you bridge things from from one world to another world um, additional thing that I want to um, to do here is uh, to show you how I actually um, get those values that I created in external here so I have this people age right and um, I want to get that so uh, what I will be doing I have uh, BS well I know that it's on a global scope it's external um, and then I get people age, which will be basically it's a, it's the sa same dictionary, right? So I already know that it's a dictionary, and it has of type int, and I will have int inside because my key is string and my value is int, right? So I know that it's an int and I can already type that. So cool, I get this people age, but I don't know if it exists at all. So what I uh, I want to do is, um, I want to get that. I do that with uh, dictionary get age, and I want to get this key. So let's now do something like that. Um, ah, I already have a switch. Let me show you something. Before I, I do uh, pattern matching here. So uh, to log that, as you can see, it's not strict, right? So it's kind of a loose uh, thing. Uh, I st typed it. I still don't know if it exists or not. Um, and it can be null and stuff like that. So when I bridge things from JavaScript to Reason, I need to, um, uh, to also worry about uh, proper typing and proper pattern matching uh, not to cause errors. Because after all, Reason is a safe world. JavaScript is kind of chaotic world right so I have uh, I want to pattern match on that and I will say if it's none meaning if it's null uh, for me right if I get nothing then I want to uh, log uh, uh, is not found and then uh, if it's some uh, age then I will basically log something else uh, and yeah, here, uh, yeah, it's supposed. Uh, now you see, because I typed it here, it will say that it's uh, it's an int, and I already have um, all these like uh, errors that come because of uh, type safe uh, system and stuff like that. <clears throat> okay, let's check that. We compile. Yeah, cool. That it works. Uh, now uh, let's do another thing. I will leave it as it is. Uh, what I want to do is I want to get value I actually have a function here get person that uh, returns um, an object and I want to get it from JavaScript into reason so what I can do I can say uh, bs well external um, then I say get person and I will uh, type it I, it just like has a unit and it will return person um which i will create in a bit um and will uh, be called with the same name so i need to create this type right if i create type person uh it will have name uh string last name a string and age as int it will uh 
fail because of syntax cell. I forgot something here. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, so right now, if I will uh, say get person, show you I will get this person okay but the thing is I said that it's a person and um, I want to get name so if uh, it won't fail it will show me that it's fine but if I will uh, reload it I will get an error. Uh, not an error, I will get undefined. So what's the problem here? The problem is from JavaScript world, I'm getting JavaScript object uh, and it tries to put this object inside uh, a person here. So if I do it that way, it uh, because it's passed to log and stuff like that, uh, it just, paste the, the contents of this JavaScript object. But if I treat it as res uh, as a record, trying to get this name out of it, it just won't let me. So what uh, if if I try to use it as object, it won't let me not reason objects and not uh, uh, JavaScript objects. Uh, so what I can do, I can say that my person is basically JST. This is the object. So it will be like that. And uh, something like that. Let me just paste it from here. Uh, now that's for converters. JST. Ah, yeah, so it's an object. So I need to pass here uh, this one. I uh, remember I showed you a syntax of object. So it's not the actual reason object, it's JST, meaning it's a JavaScript object. Now, if I will, let me just remove it for a second. If I save it, it uh, the compiler will change it and it will seem like it's reason object, but it's not because it has uh, strings here. So this is a shorthand for using JST because it's used all over the place. That is just easier to write it that way. So what's happening here uh, now, my JavaScript object is getting into reason world and I can access these fields. In order to access them, I use this syntax. So now I can get my name and Just reload that. Yeah, I got my name. So um, that's a cool thing, but um, I want all the power of records, right? I want to use uh, records. So like how um, I can do that. Um, let's before jumping in, uh, into this and, and seeing how to do that, let's talk about like passing records from reason world to JavaScript. Let's say we wrote our um, app in Reason and we want to pass something to uh, uh, some package somewhere. So I have here an external, I have, um, let's say this print test thing. So what I can say, uh, I, I will have some kind of test record. I will create it as uh, I type test record. And my test record will get, uh, have test a string. It will have test two a string. Uh, and that's that's basically it for now. I will have a value on like uh, that I want to reach externally. It will, it's called print test. And uh, it gets the type of test record and it returns a unit 
because uh, it's console log, uh, it's a side effect, and it's called print test. All right. So this is like what what I have here. So right now, if I do uh, print test, let me just create this record. Uh, test record uh, is uh, test hey uh, test two hello and now if I um, call it print print test and pass this test record Uh, then it's supposed to not work as expected, but like to show something. So uh, cool, it it worked, but not in the way I wanted it to. Right. So remember, records are uh, compiled to arrays with the keys here, but I, I want to actually have the same data structure in JavaScript form. <coughs> I want to pass it to the uh, some package that needs this data structure, right? So what I can do, and it's like super powerful feature, uh, I can use converters and it's called like I uh, if I call it VS deriving abstract. What's happening here? I cannot create my uh, my record in the in the regular way anymore. I need to create it uh, as a function with labeled arguments, where every label arguments is the key in my data structure. So it will be test equal hey. And uh, test two equal hi. So remember the labeled arguments we've talked uh, label arguments we talked about. So now I have test rec, and now if I pass it here, let's see what we'll get. We get the proper data structure. Super cool. Now I have my test record here and I have uh, fields that make sense for me here, but I don't, uh, I want to pass them differently to a package. I can do, I can rename them actually. I can do uh, uh, use like BS as, uh, like, sorry, I, I just keep it that way. And then I use BS as, and I put here, let's say type. So right now, my first field will be called type. The second field will be, let's say called test or something. So you see, it works properly. Cool. So um, talked about that. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about is um, JavaScript classes. Um, and actually, you know what? Yeah, I will talk about uh, class now and, and on, about converters later on. Uh, the thing is, there's another deriving uh, that you can use here. Uh, but yeah, let's talk uh, about classes. So if I have some kind of type, for example, uh, let's say I want to say, uh, I, I want to do this. I want to say new date. And I cannot use it as a function, right? Because it's it's not a function; it's a class. I need to instantiate. I need to call new. So I can use BS new, and again, it's external. 
the the best thing to memorize about the ex the external it's the same as let it's uh, at first it's confusing because because uh, like what this external is about but uh, just treat it as let and and you're good uh, and these treat those as like on buckle script annotations and then you're also good so I want to create date function where that will get a unit and will get me existing date uh, which I don't know what date is so it's an abstract type and we'll call ex uh, actually a new on date uh, so so far so good and my date will be create date cool so now if I print it it's supposed to work uh, it's not test record Why, why it's saying test record? External create date. Create date. Ah, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that's because of print test. And you see like the cool thing, it even, the, uh, even I bridge from JavaScript to reason, from reason to JavaScript, it, it, it doesn't give me to uh, do these mistakes. And like in JavaScript, it will probably uh, even in TypeScript, it will um, let me do like weird stuff, and then I will see errors in production. So here, what I want to do, I want to just log my date. Yeah, and yeah, I, I have my date here, which is cool. Uh, yeah, this is for the for the, for the classes. There are additional things for the classes. You can read about that in the docs. I won't cover that. It's uh, like you can create your JavaScript. Uh, yeah, JavaScript class. Well, let, let me just show you really quick. Uh, you create JavaScript class in the following way. You can read more about that in the docs. But um, yeah, you can like to be a set public and like just create a JavaScript class in the following way. Uh, yeah, that's for classes, functions we talked about. It's like BSVal, uh, it's on a global scope. But sometimes I want um, to have a method called on some JavaScript object, right? And the question is how I do that. I don't want to create all uh, like signatures of uh, let's say I have a package I um, I have some uh, object on this package I have method on the on this object I want to call it I don't want to recreate all the structure and stuff like that so I actually can do that and let's do it with math so I have abstract type math and I have uh, I can define a value it's on a global scope right so I can say uh, my math is math uh, so here you see the math is um, um, starting with the, like uh, its uppercase and um, I cannot use it that way because it will uh, think uh, it's a module or variant or something uh, so that's the that's why I cannot do it like that uh, so I have this math it's available on, uh, on the scope of this module, but I want to call uh, random. So what I can do, I can say BS send, and it's kind of similar to, uh, to BS val, but uh, instead of having function, uh, function signature here, it will get basically two uh, parameters. One parameter will be the, uh, the module itself, uh, yeah, sorry, it's called random, I'll call it random, and the signature, the first one will be the module itself, the second one will be the argument that will, uh, you want to pass to this, uh, like, uh, basically any arguments that you want to pass to this random function. 
So I will pass it in int integer and it will return a float, right? And uh, yeah, it uh, it's the same name. Um, actually, let me do different name. And now uh, let's do this random thing. Call it random. I path math and I path uh, uh, sorry no just twenty three. So already done this. Ah, uh, it's. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I just had this random, sorry. R and D, and yeah, now it will work. Cool, I have this random. And um, yeah, that's how you create uh, call uh, methods on, on uh, JavaScript objects. Uh, imports and exports are done in the following way. Let's say I want path, path. I can call it as, and we've already seen VS module, but uh, just to recap, I have VS module called path, and it's also external. And I want to call dear name. Uh, I will pass a string, and I will return a string. Uh, so that's uh, how I create my path. And uh, if we search for path here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just a different file, right? And that's weird why I don't see um, requires. Maybe I haven't saved it. Actually, let's. I think it's because uh, deal name. Yeah. Second, you see, the thing is, I required it, but if I haven't used it yet, it does nothing. If I, uh, oh, I just missed it. No, I'm right. So, you see, I don't have a path require because I don't use it, and when I, when I start using, then I will get this require. So that's how you use it with modules. Uh, you can uh, call JavaScript exceptions with the uh, JSCXN. Uh, another thing that I wanted to show you uh, is uh, converting from JavaScript. So we, we saw this JavaScript T, an object, right? Um, and let's say I want to convert this object to, uh, to like to get an old JavaScript object. Uh, when you would use BS scope and when BS sends. Um, well, BS scope you will use when um, you can scope things with like hierarchies and stuff like that. And BS send you call on on, uh, on object. Let's say if you have a class that you instantiate, you have a new class and you want to call a method on this new class, you will use BS send, right? You cannot use BS scope because BS scope is uh, supposed to be something that is uh, like available in the current scope, right? So the the main idea is with BS scope is something that is already available on the current scope, and you want you just want to like go into this scope and and like call methods on it. The the thing is uh, I did it with the same example with math. Um, because like I have, I can do the send also with the with module for example. So I have a module path. I want to call method on path. I can uh, call it with send. I cannot do it with BS scope. Uh, so um, what 
I wanted to show you is how I can go basically from JavaScript to uh, to record, which is like super cool, and um, I can totally do that. Let's say I have type person, and my type person has name string and age int, and it has last name string. Uh, and let me just comment out everything else I had in this file. So I have this uh, type person and I create uh, an external uh, so I create an external it will be get person and just to recap um, this is the get person right it returns this data structure so I call get person and I want to uh, basically it will get uh, no arguments and remember um, every function that is executed without arguments it still gets unit argument so um, actually you know what before going into this I want to um, show you something else that I forgot to tell you when we talked about uh, apps um, deriving abstract here so what I forgot to tell you here that you can also use optional which is like really cool thing you can uh, put optional on let, let's say test tree which is a string and that, that means that you can uh, sometimes when you want to pass something to uh, to npm package you don't uh, you want to pass data structure and you have uh, let's say uh, 10 different options but you want uh, only to pass three when you use records you have to pass everything right so with bs optional it gives you an ability to like pass uh, only the ones that you need uh, and it's done uh, it is done here and uh, actually supposed to fail here uh, yeah let's call it we have two uh, tests and test three uh, so uh, so uh, in addition to that like we have only two um, um, keys here and I want to pass only one because the, the other one is optional uh, so I can do it in that way and sometimes um, if you have let's say also this one is uh, as optional it's actually supposed to fail uh, yeah uh, that's not failing well anyways like if it fails we just pass a, a positional argument here and stuff like that. Um, anyway, I wanted to show you that you have this BS optional, BS optional that you can pass, and um, uh, it me it it's really uh, easy to write this one for passing to the module. And now let's take a look how we get uh, a JavaScript object from the npm package, and how we actually convert it to records. So um, I have this type person with name age last name string and I create external BS file external get person has unit and I get uh, a person and it's something like that and um, yeah multiple definitions let me just comment this out so right now what I will have is if I call um, now I want to convert it basically to record right so um, in order to convert it to record I have uh, BS deriving JS converter and my JS converter will be um, in charge of creating uh, two functions it will create function person from JS and person to JS. 
So um, it's a super cool feature that lets you like uh, change records from J um, like pass things from JS to Reason and from Reason to JS. Even though when you pass things from Reason to JS, it's advised to use more um, uh, BS driving abstract because it has more uh, more features and it it's like easier uh, to do it doesn't generate additional functions if you pass thing uh, want to pass things to J uh, to reason from js then uh, let's say i want to create this uh, person from js and it will be get person uh, some uh, it's function and it will fail because it's expected uh, kind of type and stuff like that. So why is that? Because it expects that this is an object. I think that's that's the pro uh, now. I think it will work. No, sorry, that's not what we're trying to achieve. <laughs> uh, Person from JS. Uh, ah, yeah, I know what, what I wanted to show you. So what I want to do, I want to create a, basically a new abstract type that I can use, uh, and I I can do it by passing here new type. Now instead of using person, I will use abs person, and then I can log it. And it's supposed to work. And come on. <laughs> yeah, I got this name. Cool, everything works. So, yeah, th there is like a uh, much more to to go through uh, in general like in buckle script uh, docs um, so i will leave that to you and let's get into um, a couple of libraries that i wanted to show you that i want you to use during your um your exercises for tomorrow and um yeah um just a second i will just open these links <clears throat> so in your and um, let me just open your exercise too um i think it's this one just a second <clears throat> yeah this is like for day three so what you supposed to do for for the next day uh, for like today's exercise um, try to wrap every exercise you did in day two into a module write an interface file for every module exporting only uh, necessary types write tests for API response exercise from day one so again uh, in day one you had um, this exercise and have a bunch of error codes so just write tests for that and for that you will use bs jest i remind you that uh, if you want to consume a package from uh, especially like package that is um, working with uh, with buckle script you need to uh, um, add it to dependencies here so i will put here like like that in the following way bs jest and then if i want to use jest i will open it and, and stuff like that uh, in a, in addition to that just configure a project to run with webpack super simple just consume your um, bs.js file and and that's it and just run in parallel uh, things in parallel so there is bs loader which was out there for quite a while and right now the pro project is I mean, is kind of not maintained I think and uh, it's uh, sort of deprecated or, or something like that so like don't use bs loader just run 
DSB and run Webpack. That's the, the advice thing. Uh, this is BSJS and I want to use BSFetch and BSJSON. That's the complicated one and uh, we definitely will walk through this tomorrow when we'll start the stream. Um, use BSFetch and BSJSON to get data from Star Wars API and paste it to console. Uh, so another thing, so several things that I wanted to show you before uh, like we finish. Uh, you have JS Promise. Uh, JS Promise is for using promises. So basically it's a module uh, and I remind you to open a module and in general like to use JS Promise you let me put it here. Uh, wait. Uh, so this is just uh, promise. So in order to use this, I will write it like that. It's a module. I can open it, and I can write things inside, right? And uh, yeah. Um, or you can just do like open just promise and stuff like that. So inside you have like race, then catch, all this kind of stuff. Um, so um, in addition to that, there is BS Jest. BS Jest, you install it and you use it in the following way you open Jest. You write, describe, expect, you open, expect, and you write your test. So pretty much similar to what you do with the JavaScript, but with modules. And it's a, a good uh, exercise to, to use uh, modules. Um, and it says like add these to like dev dependencies or BS dependencies and stuff like that. In addition to that, there is BS fetch, which you will be using for um, for fetching things. So that's how it's done. You open just promise locally, you call fetch, and then you pass to then function. Then function is available on just promise. That's why you open it. So you pass it to then uh, function, you pass the text, then you pass it to then, and then you get like you print things and, and stuff like that. You install it, you add it to BS fetch and you're good to go. That's for the uh, for the uh, fetching part. The most complicated is the BS JSON part. So you will get data from server and you need to decode this data. So um, it shows several examples how you decode things. And uh, I want you to try to Play, play around with it and we will walk through that tomorrow. We'll see how, how it's done. Um, and yeah, that's the example how it, for example, you have a JSON, you run JSON decode, you basically the idea you have these fields and that's how you map between uh, the key, decode between the key to the uh, actual type. And uh, you get everything inside like for example you have json you pass json you get uh things passing to start uh, like start key will be of type point that that's the main idea yeah so that's that's it for today uh and um yeah if you have questions i'm uh, still for uh, here for like uh answers and stuff like that and uh, tomorrow we will have the last day and we'll talk about like fetching, we'll talk about Reason React, we will um, finish up several things with like, uh, maybe if we'll have time, we will talk also about polymorphic variants and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's stream and uh, <coughs> see you tomorrow. I'm still uh, here, so like if you have questions, feel free to ask. Ah, regarding the link, since the same link for the snippets uh, and the same link for the exercises.
You're welcome.